Good morning, my dear students. Uh, today I'm uh, will talk about the my last lecture with you this year. Uh, uh, it's about the host parasite uh, interactions, and this is very basic, uh, important part to understand uh, the pathogenesis of the periodontal disease. Uh, and actually, this term is applied for can, any kind of disease within the human body. But uh, as a periodontic department, we just want to talk and focus on the important uh, points that including the periodontal disease regarding the periodontal pathogens with the host interactions. Uh, and from the name is the interactions involve the whole uh, uh, the whole levels of the interactions between the parasites uh, outer membrane with the cell membrane and all of the related uh, activating uh, and activation and expression of different kinds of molecules and uh, ligands with enzymes, proteins at the level and they're involved in the uh, pathogenesis of periodontal diseases. So I just wonder that uh, if you just uh, give me your attention with my last lectures, I mean, it's very important and it's difficult. And all of my uh, lectures actually uh, is a bit long, I know that. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I just try to make it as, as simple as uh, I, I and summarize it as, as much as I can to you, just to understand uh, clearly um, the basic uh, principles of those lectures actually. So this is the horse parasite, uh, it definitely is, is continuous with the uh, uh, the previous lectures of the pathogenesis and you remember the dental plaque and the dental plaque hypothesis. Uh, so we know that the periodontal disease, as we said, that is initiated and maintained by the uh, microbial dental plaque. And the um, uh, this dental plaque, uh, we just talk about it according to the different hypotheses actually. Uh, uh, on the last one, you remember the keystone pathogen hypothesis that uh, the, the keystone species, and also, uh, to be honest, uh, not only the keystone one, uh, but different uh, periodontal pathogens, the pathogenic periodont ones that uh, has the ability to directly influence the host cells and tissues, or the major destructive pathways that come from the host, as I, uh, as I said before, by activating the inflammatory or cellular uh, humoral immune system that's causing damaging to the periodontal tissues. So this is the basic things that uh, uh, brought from the dental plaque. But how about the um, uh, those uh, devastating effects that the periodontal pathogen causing to the uh, to the horse? And part to understand those interaction actually, and from the title of the lecture, because the microbial cell interaction. Uh, one of the most important uh, part uh, to achieve the successful and to establish a successful colonization is after the adherence of those bacteria to the host membrane or to the host cells is just to inducing different different mechanisms in order in order to to get the inside the cells or within the intracellular compartments. And the term of microbial invasion is just applied to this entity. Uh, this phenomenon regarding a very characteristic key features to the uh, 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 certain sets or specific types of periodontal pathogens and virulence that we call uh, the microbial invader. So not all the periodontal pathogens or in general, the, all the microbiology should be invader. But the, uh, when we talk about the invader one, we just uh, talk about certain powerful uh, pathogens uh, that have, has the ability after the adherence to the microbial to the host cells getting inside the cells. And regarding this uh, entity, the microbial uh, pathogens, when uh, when got the inside cells, um, uh, there's too many advantages, to be honest, um, that the bacteria get from is just to exploit all of the intracellular compartments regarding the nutrients and the uh, uh, the nutrients are different peptides and molecules that the bacteria need to uh, feed on it and uh, get shelter from the host defense mechanisms. So in order to get away from the host defense mechanisms, uh, one of the mechanisms that the bacteria need to, uh, in addition to, for example, antagonizing those uh, host defense mechanisms, uh, 
the bacteria, I think the best, uh, maybe the best option is just getting inside the cells and just defend it from the uh, direct or indirect killing mechanisms or the hover defense mechanism. So uh, the uh, defending the bacterial cells and accessing all of the nutrients within the cells make the options of the uh, invasion uh, highly demanded to the most of the powerful pathogens uh, to do. Uh, this uh, phenomenon uh, representing a challenging issues for the extracellular and intracellular host defense mechanisms. So no doubt for the extracellular, uh, the host defense mechanisms need to overcome these obstacles. So the bacteria when got inside cells, the immune defense outside cells getting have to do a, a very modifications in order to tackle this problem. And even within the host cells, the intracellular one, uh, the need it needs to activate different pathways and signaling uh, things in order to how can uh, deal with that bacteria. Uh, so uh, as we said, the advantage is one of the is getting host defense mechanism away from the host defense mechanism. So and also some many therapeutic agents that uh, that uh, sometimes during the disease state that the patients take the antimicrobials or the certain antiseptics, especially the irrigating one. And going within that tissues, and we face a lot of bacteria there. Uh, but the intracellular, uh, the excess, uh, the bacteria found extracellular definitely will affect it. But the intracellular one also get enough protection from the therapeutic agents. Uh, the two different uh, two uh, uh, different kinds of bacterium uh, has the ability to invade a uh, kind uh, various uh, types of cells like uh, irrigated bacteria, mycetium committants. The Staph aureus uh, has the ability to invade a very powerful invader, the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Uh, shows the ability to different size uh, to invade different size of cells, including all the field cells. In fact, the Ephicalis one was found to be the most predominant one uh, within the uh, oral epithelial cells of presentitis samples, although that this bacterium is very active within the endodontic lesion, but it's found to be within the presentitis samples uh, uh, found in high frequencies. Uh, if we return to our uh, our favorite one in terms of the powerful protein pathology and the keystone one, which is involved in the red complex, uh, so chronic complex uh, classifications, we talk about the pigeon gingivalis, uh, has the ability to embed a variety of uh, eukaryotic cells, including oral epithelial cells, and uh, oral fibroblasts, endothelial cells, uh, through different invasion mechanisms. So these are presenting a lot of PG outside the cells, this is the cell membrane, okay? So, and uh, you, see, you can see here in the black arrows, uh, after attachment to the host membrane, the bacteria going inside and going different levels within the cytoplasmics. And uh, the favorite locations of this intercellular PG on different kinds of microorganisms is to found uh, surrounding uh, the nucleus of the cells. Uh, because the availability of the higher original uh, sources of the uh, nutrient uh, founds uh, around the nucleus. Uh, the bacteria is found to exploit the highly nutrient with intracellular environments. Uh, this is doing, uh, this will lead to the, uh, favoring the bacteria's survival. And in the same time, this ensures that the uh, leading to the reduction in the expression of the aggressive features. I mean the aggressive features of the host cells and cells, because uh, just imagine if the bacteria found outside the cells, the bacteria, the cells, the host cells, keep continue releasing of those inflammatory cytokines uh, from the cells and the whole situation within that tissue be inflam inflamed and exaggerated. But uh, when the bacteria just get rid of all these obstacles and go inside the cells, so the, all of these aggressive features of the host will be uh, in remission. So this will ensure that the host cells will keep in, uh, in, the, in a stable integrity and vital as long, the, as long as the bacteria need to do that and survive for a prolonged period. 
And uh, the PG virus, although it's found in different kinds of the uh, cells, uh, buccal epithelial cells or cravicular epithelial cells within the periodontal destructive size, but also found uh, in the healthy periodontal size, but with a very, very low number. And in, uh, to, be, uh, to be honest, in the, we found in the uh, inner form, unless there is a certain uh, ecological, environmental, uh, 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 points that uh, stimulate the P. gingivalis to do its role as a periodontal pathogen and going to the uh, periodontitis samples. There's too, too many major mechanisms uh, involved in the invasion describing uh, the invasion of those bacteria. Uh, this described in literature about the two main mechanisms, it's called uh, zipper and uh, trucker mechanisms of those bacteria. In addition, there's uh, also some uh, minor mechanisms involved to explain how the bacteria going inside cells, but this zipper and trigger, uh, mostly, or most of the bacteria use one of them. Okay, uh, the zipper mechanisms, <clears throat> uh, a very simple uh, describe, description of this mechanisms is, in, is mediated by a certain interaction of specific bacterial ligands with the host cell receptors. And when the binding uh, occur between those uh, two entities, this will cause signaling and stimulation of the uh, uh, certain uh, actin remodeling and polymerization within the cytoplasm of the host. And uh, this binding at the level of the membrane and sub um, submembranous level, uh, uh, actually this is very com molecular complicated. I don't want to uh, take time just to describe it because I think it's, it's not about your level students, is maybe to the postgraduate one, but very simply it's just after binding the cyto uh, cytokine, uh, Activity modeling and polymerization uh, happen, happen and take place here. And uh, this will causing uh, an uh, outward reflex from the nucleus to the cytoplasm again, going uh, uh, stimulation to the membrane just to doing a vagusic cup formation. And this vagusic cup formation, as we see here in the diagram, abroad the bacteria inside within that a very uh, large capsule or uh, uh, cup. Uh, surrounding all the bacteria from whole sites. This is just a broad, broad bacteria and sites and engulf it within the endosomal uh, trafficking till, uh, the, uh, till the bacteria uh, 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 need to, uh, or just need to stay within that endosomal or not, depending on the choice of those bacteria. And this choice actually is not available to the whole bacterial species only the powerful, I again, I just repeat this, a very important information about the, only the very parental pathogen has the ability to, cho to choose whether to stay within that endosome or just going outside the endosome and then affecting other cells and uh, the process just keep going on. So the zipper mechanisms uh, uh, seems to be brought or just seems to be implemented by different kinds of bacteria like Yersinia, Listeria, Neisseria, uh, Etc. The trigger mechanism, uh, in comparison, uh, it involves the uh, uh, secretion uh, using the, the type three secretion system, in which, in including the insertion of certain effectors of the, oh, this look like a needle projection from the bacteria within the uh, uh, host cells inside the cytoplasm, and releasing of those effector and enzymes and a protein from the bacteria within the host. This enzymes and proteins going uh, uh, leading to the stimulation of certain uh, um, uh, microtubules and cytoskeleton of the cells here, and this uh, I think the same uh, look like the same of the zipper mechanisms going the ruffling of the membrane around the um, uh, microorganisms, uh, uh, encapsulating them and then engulf all the bacteria inside uh, and doing the same thing within the endosomal trafficking. Uh, this mechanism seems to be brought by the Shigella flexinary and Samuel Tymphorium. If we turn back to the, uh, our periodontal pathogen, P. gingivalis, it seems that P. G. is not, uh, uh, utilizes the trigger mechanisms because the P. gingivalis uh, doesn't having the type, type three secretion system. Uh, actually the, uh, type, uh, the secretion systems till, to, till date 
uh, about nine uh, types of the pigeon system has been discovered. Okay, uh, pigeon javal seems to use type nine secretion system, uh, in which it's, it's about the pore system uh, translocation from the outer membrane uh, till uh, to releasing the enzymes and proteases outside the cells. But uh, it seems not using that. And instead of this, pigeon javal is, uh, it seems that it might using the zipper mechanisms because. Uh, I think it's more applicable to PG because the PG has different kinds of variance factor, uh, different kinds of variance factor like L L LPS or uh, certain fine barriers or uh, uh, proteases that use uh, that has a conjugation or binding ability with the host receptors on doing uh, the uh, engulfment or stimulation the engulfment of the PG. Uh, from the, the, the PG inside the cells. Uh, and instead of using single invasion mechanism, PG Nivalis has shown to use different invasion mechanisms, for example, lipid raft mediator or clathrin mediated endocytosis. The clathrin here in the diagram, a very simple description actually, is uh, mediated by uh, binding. Uh, so the, the binding of the uh, certain receptors found within the host with the bacteria. This uh, leading to the activation of certain adapting or molecules here in the round uh, in the red uh, circles, and uh, to be traffic in this form. And when the trafficking has been has done, uh, leading to stimulation of certain uh, blue molecules here in clathrin here to be uh, trafficking also. After that, all of the uh, uh, after stimulation of the membrane and doing ruffling and engulfment inside the capsule or the sac that the bacteria. Uh, within the receptor, uh, found within that sacs is the sacs mainly uh, produced by uh, the trafficking of this clathrin, a blue one. You see, like uh, a circumscribed, like uh, by this uh, blue circles of clathrin and adaptin. Then after that, the clathrin disintegrated from this sacs, going outside and going again, circulating within the cytoplasm. Uh, leading to the uh, repetition of the uh, process again, if the bacteria need to do that. And the bacteria with the uh, receptors going into the early fusion that with the early endosomes and the uh, status of this bacterium and the future, and the future state of this bacterium uh, will be decided by the bacteria itself. Not all, not all the bacteria actually, only the parental pathogen. Uh, if we talk about the enzymes that uh, uh, might involve in the host cell interaction, uh, in the host bacterium interaction, sorry, uh, microorganisms has the ability to produce a very variety of enzymes and uh, harmful product, waste products like ammonia and hydrogen. Uh, this will directly either affecting uh, the, the digestion, uh, causing digestion of the extracellular host protein and also produce a, an extra nutrient or nutrient sources to the bacteria to survive within the affected site. Among those extracellular post-host protein that uh, uh, this, uh, among those enzymes, sorry, that causing digestion of these proteins, we have the proteinases. And proteinases represent a very large scale of family of the enzymes that the bacteria can release to digest collagen, for example, elastin, fibrinectin, fibrin, and all of these components represent the component of the extracellular matrix. This is the, cycle, the skeleton of the connective tissue. So if the skeleton on the connective tissue would be uh, destructed by those enzymes, the whole tissues will be uh, uh, conf, uh, uh, characterized by formation of a, a very huge, large gaps to the bacteria just to entry uh, within the tissue deeper and deeper. In addition to all of these components, also various other components of the intercellular matrix of both epithelial and connective tissue also, like certain molecules and peptides. Uh, the endotoxin, uh, the lipopolysaccharides, uh, representing the lipopolysaccharides of the chromonegative uh, uh, bacteria, LPS, and also include the lipotechnic acids, the LTAs of gram-positive both can induce the inflammatory and immune responses uh, by stimulating the production of cytokine. In addition to those uh, uh, stimulating of cytokine, also there's 
uh, endotoxin has the ability to inducing or has the effect actually to the uh, blood coagulation and the, the complement system. Uh, the main effects also come from the inducing uh, vascular permeability, the LPS. Vascular permeability, uh, uh, also the uh, stimulating the chemotactic actions, inflammatory cells, and migration to form, to move and migrate into the accumulating gingival tissue, and specifically the polymorphonuclear uh, cells. So the LPS, uh, uh, after binding with a certain uh, uh, host receptors, for example, the uh, TOLAC receptors on complement receptor, uh, receptor 3, for example, uh, uh, causing stimulation of different signaling mechanisms within the host cells, leading to the uh, releasing and activation, for example, the certain cytokines like interleukin 8. And instead, inter uh, in turn, sorry, interleukin 8 has the chemotactic action or the neutrophil macrophages going to the uh, uh, junctional epithelium and has their roles as uh, in the innate defense mechanisms and other mechanisms. The proteinases, the proteases, okay, uh, as we said that it has a key, real or key role in the prenatal disease through the degradation of the extracellular matrix, and this is, uh, represents the skeleton of the connective tissue by hydrolyzing the peptide bonds. Okay, this represents the mechanisms. Uh, proteinases could derive from the host and the bacteria itself, but the most devastating one uh, belongs to the host, actually. Uh, Representing collagenases, elastase-like, trypsin-like, as well as serine and cysteine proteinases. Uh, actually, in fact, this proteinase uh, seems to be circulating uh, within even the physiological healthy situation, but in very, very low, low concentrations and without uh, any activity to have a destruction, I mean, uh, positive point. Uh, and these proteinases seems uh, uh, circulating with their uh, uh, counterpart of uh, uh, inhibitors. We say the proteinase inhibitors in, in, term, uh, in, in the meaning of equilibrium. And that's why the normal physiological mechanisms uh, involved to maintain the physiological health in the periodontal tissue and other kinds of tissues in the, the human body uh, all, always involve the uh, circulating of those proteinases and in their inhibitors, but in a very low concentrations without activation. Uh, but the, if the proteinases uh, or their proteinase inhibitors uh, in, uh, uh, going in sort of equilibrium or uh, one, for example, have an expression over the another one or etc. This will causing uh, uh, the uh, aggressiveness of diseases and disease process and the uh, stimulating of various kinds of inflammatory changes within the tissue. And not only about the disease, or even in the uh, different biological activities, including in the healing, including in uh, carcinogenesis, this is very important in presenting the collagenases one and the proteinases, uh, carcinogenesis and uh, the healing, the blood coagulation systems, and different kinds of the biological activities. So, as we said, that the, this inhibitor has the uh, has has the role to balance the effect of the proteases. For example, the um, alpha two microglobulin inhibit the collagenases, and alpha one antitrypsin has the inhibit ability to inhibit the effect of the PMN uh, collagenases. One of the most important uh, types of uh, proteases, proteinases actually, is the called the matrix metalloproteinases, the MMP. Uh, the matrix metalloproteinases um, uh, involved uh, have a central role in different biological processes, as we said, for example, so maybe in, in embryogenesis, the normal tissue remodeling. And this remodeling is very, very important and has a very huge meaning in the uh, Predental ligament fiber, a normal function of those fibers as a cushion against the occlusal force. Also in wound healing, uh, after treatment of uh, different kinds of treatment in predental diseases, whether non-surgical or surgical. Uh, angiogenesis and all of the angiogenesis involved in the healing process and even within the inflammatory, all the alterations, uh, the micro and macro uh, changes happens within the, the um, uh, capillaries and arterioles found in the, within the uh, periodontal ligament. 
on bone. And in disease uh, such as uh, aviroma, arthritis, cancer, and tissue alterations. Till now, uh, we have currently have 28, about 28 matrix mineral proteins genes has been identified in human uh, with multi domain protein. Uh, as we said, in the prudent, uh, if you remember, the prudent is a structural compromise from uh, comprise, uh, sorry, of fibrous, including uh, collagen, elastin, glycoprotein. Uh, lipids, water. In addition, uh, uh, there are a variety of extracellular matrix like proteoglycan, troboglycan, and proteins. All of these matrix components uh, uh, found in the state of uh, turnover. The turnover is, is, is a phenomenon of the normal uh, remodeling action. I mean, uh, in the remodeling action uh, within the physiological uh, environment of uh, the tissue found within that physiological environment, for example, uh, in chewing and in uh, uh, subjecting different kind of occlusal forces. Okay, so this uh, there's a mass, uh, much matrix enzyme activity, in, in including the matrix mineral proteinases in this physiological activity in health. Uh, in disease, this the expression of those uh, in matrix, uh, the MMP, going to be increased and often in tissue repair and remodeling. So. Um, in addition, uh, we said that the uh, the proteinases has inhibitors. So this including the MMP has inhibitors. It's called TIMP, the tissue inhibitor of matrix mineral proteinases, TIMP. So uh, it's evident that the activity of MMP and their inhibitor associated with the tissue and in turnover. So uh, if the uh, turnover uh, uh, required that the MMP will be over-exaggerated, the inhibitors here come to be active in order to uh, antagonize the effect of the MMP in order to prevent further uh, destruction within the uh, pd ligand, for example. So the active role of the TIMP is going to be so necessary to uh, keep that MMP in equilibrium all the time. So, but in, in case of gingiv gingivitis and disruptive bradyntitis, uh, um, even within the healing, the uh, expression of MMP going to be overweight the expression of the their inhibitors, so leading to the uh, kinds of the increased inflammatory uh, process within that uh, phenomenon. Uh, so, uh, as we said, that it's uh, the TIMS has the ability to antagonize and keeping this in equilibrium in case of turnover, uh, including present of tissue, collagen metabolism, or present of ligament. This is in order to adapt the occlusive forces generating during function. And this is all of this information about the normal physiological. But just imagine in the disease, normally the expression of MMP either increase or the expression of the TIMP will decrease. So the uh, uh, devastating effect of this MMP as hydrolyzing would be more and more. Okay. Uh, it seems there are certain controllers of the MMP and their inhibitors in order to uh, keep it in equilibrium. It's found that the it was found that the tumor necrosis factor alpha and the transforming growth factor beta has a principal role in the regulation of the extracellular matrix turnover by enhancing the production of MMP and TIMS. So in uh, in, in form that the TNFA uh, alpha sorry. And uses the MMP expression, whereas the TGF beta uh, promote the TIMS. So their, so these proteins and their controller should be in equilibrium all the time to maintain the physiological health status normally uh, in balance all the time. What's happening in disease and in terms of the microbiology and the, uh, with this uh, with the microbe interaction, uh, it has been shown that the present pathogen may disrupt this balance. Okay. Uh, degradation of the TIMS, as we said, and activating uh, or deactivating of the MMP, uh, no, uh, usually uh, occurred by the p gingivalis proteases. This is one of the, uh, as, as we said, the keystone one, keystone pathogen uh, involved uh, in the uh, pathogenesis, in addition to different kinds of the presence of the pathogen, but the p gingivalis proteases, the collagen uh, cysteine proteinases, gingipane, has the ability to decrease the TIMS and activating MMP. So this will continue leading continuous inflammation and advanced periodontal destructions. Uh, 
We have other uh, entity here, like um, as we call the um, cytokine, the inflammatory mediators, and it's very important messengers involved in the inflammatory, the whole inflammatory situations uh, and uh, in different uh, uh, inflammatory levels from the uh, from the low inflammation to the mild to the severe. Uh, to the even in different biological activities, including carcinogenesis, etc. Uh, so the cytokine uh, is um, uh, mainly precipitated by cells and transmit uh, signals to uh, other cells. Uh, have numerous functions, including uh, initiation and maintenance of the immune and inflammatory responses, uh, regulation of growth and differentiation of cells, and this is very important. Uh, point in order to keep certain cells, the active, the active, uh, certain active cells that have a basic roles in, in defense mechanisms always active and ready uh, to challenge the bacteria and counter the bacteria. Involved in the communication, very important that communication between leukocytes and other cells, such as fibroblasts, epithelia, and fibroblast, uh, epithelia, endothelia, and fibroblast. Uh, but those uh, activities cannot exist without the active form of the cytokines after uh, binding with its, uh, everyone binding with its specific receptor to be active. Different types of cytokine uh, this, uh, has been discovered um, on different uh, uh, pathological term uh, were applied. Uh, the pro-inflammatory, uh, chemotactic, anti-inflammatory, lymphocyte signaling one, the pro-inflammatory is like interleukin-1, including 1-alpha and 1-beta, tumor cross factor alpha. This can stimulate bone resorption and inhibit bone formation. Uh, the chemotactic one, a series of more than 20 molecules uh, in, uh, involved in the chemotactic, interleukin-8, okay, has the powerful chemotactic function for the leukocyte, particularly for neutrophils, uh, but also for lymphocyte macrophages. Uh, we have the anti-inflammatory ones like interleukin 10, for example, so has a very important uh, antibacterial uh, effect. The lymphocyte signaling cytokine, uh, it means that the cytokines involved uh, in activation of certain uh, subset of inflammatory cells in the cellular and humoral mediated immunity. For example, we have the T helper 1. Uh, releases interleukin-2 and interferon gamma that enhances cell-mediated responses. Cell-mediated, just be a uh, focus. The T helper-2 uh, produce 5, 10, and 13, which mediate the humoral one. And this is uh, give the protection against the uh, offending pathogen. Uh, this can influence the immune responses uh, through determining the class of the immunoglobulin, for example, so that being produced, uh, we, we just uh, mean the antibody function. Okay, uh, the antibody function, uh, such as immunoglobulin uh, N molecules, uh, that uh, was found effective in bacterial lysis on the G was an effective in opsonization process. Immunoglobulin, for example, immunoglobulin G has different subclasses from one to four, uh, affecting the antibody production. And there are different uh, uh, sub-activities, differences between those subclasses. Immunoglobulin G2 being less strong in binding antigen than G1. Uh, several researchers have found immunoglobulin G2 be elevated over G1, sometimes in patients with severe periodontitis, uh, and just propose that this immunoglobulin G subclass levels are important factors actually in, in susceptibility to periodontitis. And this could be used as a, a prognostic marker uh, in term uh, to diagnose the possible future susceptibility of those patients to periodontitis and was the treatment plan that might drawn to those patients. We have the prostaglandin. Prostaglandin uh, uh, represent other uh, derivatives uh, called arachidonic acid derivatives, important in mediators of inflammation, uh, mainly derived from macrophages and other cells uh, by the effects uh, effect of the pro-inflammatory cytokines. And the different kinds of prostaglandin, uh, some of them uh, may be uh, popular, other the other one, for example, prostaglandin E2, 
has the potent vasodilation effect uh, also in the use of the cytokine production and actin fibroblasts are also classed. You can work on the other cytokine and inducing the MMP production. Uh, again, this consideration of those uh, uh, markers and those uh, uh, host defense, uh, the host defense uh, molecules could be used to like uh, to prognose uh, the uh, current, uh, the currently um, future situation of the disease by the measurement of it, their concentrations. Uh, they found that the concentration is a proportion of the severity of the health disease and minimum in the healthy states. An increase with gingivitis and maximum has found in the presentitis patients. Uh, when we talk about the polymorphonuclear cells, uh, represent the first line uh, of defense cells uh, and the very important part of innate immunity. Uh, polymorphonuclear cells has very important uh, effect uh, to uh, to antagonize the effect or just to tackle the uh, bacterial attack at the first uh, levels of what that found within the epithelium and even the connective tissue but mostly in the epithelial layers uh, specifically at the part of the junction of epithelium uh, uh, when facing the intracellular bacteria uh, the uh, tackling bacteria uh, that using uh, uh, to inducing the different different kinds of cytokines involved in the phagocytosis on antigen presenting cells to different uh, uh, cells uh, involved in the adaptive immunity and especially uh, T cells with the subsequent activation. And so they represent the predominant leukocytes uh, within the gingival as I said. Uh, attracted to the area by chemotactic stimuli uh, mostly by interleukin 8 uh, in the bio, from the microgons in the biofilm, specifically the LPS of those gram negative. The migration uh, seems to uh, happen in a very regular organ organized form um, uh, by trafficking along the wall of the endothelial cell junctions. But after that, it's going to migrate to the junction of epithelium. Uh, by the adhesion molecules. So all the whole process of the trafficking and migrations uh, mainly controlled by those adhesion molecules. When we, call, when we uh, talk about the migration uh, structures of those uh, uh, defense mechanisms of the PMN, it uh, involved the, um, the endothelial cells, the cell adhesion molecules, and the exervasating cells including PMN. The adhesion to trafficking is essential in front of the process as was related by cytokines. Here we have some uh, maybe rare and uh, genetic familiar disease called the leukocyte adhesion deficiency syndrome, if you hear about, uh, which is the, has the main problem of uh, loss of adhesion and trafficking of those PMN along the wall of the endothelium before it going to migrate to the junctional epithelium. So uh, if uh, they have may they may have enough number of those PMN, but the uh, trafficking and adherence uh, seems to be lack. So if there is no adherence and trafficking, so how can the uh, PMN be migrated in organized forms and then the migrating to the affected side to have a defense? So those bacteria just imagine. Uh, sorry, so those patients just imagine that. Uh, if uh, the first line of defense, they miss that first line of defense, the whole uh, subsequent uh, defenses will be disrupted, including the uh, adaptive immunity. And so the, uh, all the uh, uh, protection will be uh, disrupted and gonna be uh, uh, disoriented and the bacteria just take uh, its part just directly uh, without any effort uh, to uh, tackle and just to uh, destroy all of the epithelial and connective tissue compartments leading to the loss of the uh, host tissues. Now we just we want to talk about the host defense processes. Uh, the host defense processes, uh, maybe I think most of you uh, hear about it uh, last year, I think. Uh, in the third year, we were just talking the general pathology about the innate and the adaptive one. The innate immunity is called non-specific, okay, but on the adaptive is specific or acquired responses. Uh, 
The innate uh, reactions include the inflammatory responses, uh, but do not uh, not involve the immunological mechanisms. While the adaptive reactions include immunological responses to be very effective as the host uh, response is specifically tailored to the authentic pathogen. So uh, another term, another mean that the uh, innate one found to be non-specifically with other kind of microorganisms, but the adaptive one would be tailored or uh, directed against a certain a specific pathogen according on just depending on the memory cells. The innate defense mechanisms uh, operate without any contact with the disease-causing microorganism as with cells. So this is including physical barriers, um, uh, of the oral mucosa, epithelial surfaces, the vascular and cellular aspects also. The epithelial surface is the first region of the prudential, which come in contact and respond to the bacteria and colonizing, when it's colonizing the dental gingiva region. Prevention of attachment and colonization is very important for the host defenses. Uh, the oral mucosa itself is not simply a barrier, but has a chemical composition. So just it's not about the physical barrier only, uh, but also can uh, represent as a chemical uh, barrier, not as just physical one. Uh, and maybe could be de detrimental to the host bacteria. Uh, in addition, the cells of the epithelium also can uh, respond to the bacteria by just either producing or releasing cytokine or releasing other peptide that capable or inducing the inflammatory reaction. Okay. Uh, the major function of the innate immunity, uh, as we, we as we said, that is, is act as a physical or chemical barrier to the infection agent. Recruitment of the immune cells to the site of infection through production of cytokines activation of the adaptive immunity through the process of antigen presentation, and also the complement cascade, activation of this complement cascade to, to identify bacteria, activating cells and promote clearance of the antibody complexes or dead cells. Uh, the last one, but not least, the identification of removal of foreign substances uh, that presents in organs or tissues, blood and limb by specialized white blood cells. The adaptive immunity in turn, <clears throat> the adaptive immunity um, composed of the highly specialized cells that processes and eliminate or prevent the pathogen growth. So it is directed and tailored towards specific pathogen according to the, uh, to the memory cells that are stimulated by those innate immune defense cells. And it's all regularly this part activated when the uh, pathogen evades the uh, the innate immunity, okay, and just going uh, further deeper uh, to be to face those uh, uh, highly specified uh, activated cells. So uh, this creates immunological memory after the initial response to the specific pathogen, okay, enhances responses to subsequent encounters with that pathogen. This adaptive immunity, including both humoral which including antibody production on cell mediated immunity components uh, uh, that include both cytotoxic and helper T lymphocytes. Uh, this represents the basic of vaccination. Okay. Uh, uh, this adaptive immunity as this depends on the memory cells that on the basis of the vaccination. So, like the innate system, the adaptive system includes both the humoral immunity and cell mediated immunity component. But unlike the innate one, the adaptive immunity is highly specific to a particular pathogen. Uh, uh, so it's, it just gives you a very long la lasting protection. And this depending on the uh, foreign antigen itself, uh, whether virus or bacteria, for example, someone who may be recovered from measles uh, uh, is now protected against measles for their lifetime. But in other cases, it doesn't provide lifetime protection. Uh, like for chicken box, for example. The adaptive system response destroys the invading pathogen and any kind of toxic uh, pathogen, uh, sorry, toxic molecules they produce. If we come about the function of this adaptive one, so it just generates a threshold level of antigen at first one, 
and then generates uh, uh, certain specific signals that activating dendritic cells. And dendritic mm -hmm. cells, rep uh, cells represent one of the major antigen presenting cells that lead to activation of different kinds of uh, specified T lymphocyte and then the B lymphocyte. The major function, so recognition of a specific non-self antigen in the presence of self, uh, self host cells during the process of antigen presentation. Generation of responses that are tailored, as we said, to maximum element specific pathogen. And development of immunological memory in which pathogen are remembered in the next attack uh, if happened uh, through memory B cells and T uh, memory T cells. Now we just want to talk about the humoral immune response. Okay. Uh, the human immune response uh, uh, be did mainly mediated by macromolecules found in extracellular uh, found in extracellular uh, parts, <coughs> uh, including secreted antibodies, complement proteins, certain antimicrobial peptides. Uh, uh, it's called the humoral because as it's long to the humors or the body fluids, okay? Mainly including the antibody production. So the end result of this activation of this mechanism is leading to antibody production. T helper two activation, which is very important. T helper one, T helper two activation, cytokine production uh, and memory cell generation. Uh, the antibody functions include, after that, the uh, classical complement activation, uh, stimulating opsonization, pathogen and toxin uh, neutralization. Uh, the B cells uh, uh, activation, if we want to talk about the B cells activation, now we're just talking about the humoral, uh, so the humoral is, is about the antibody one. The B cells, the precursor of the antibody, uh, uh, antibody molecules uh, brought from the B cells one. Uh, the major function is just to make that antibody against soluble antigen, but there are different mechanisms to activate B cells. Okay, uh, T cells either just T cells independent, uh, poly, uh, B cell activation depend on uh, one of these three mechanisms, either T cell independent polyclonals. So it means that the activation of those B cells without T cell uh, mediator. So the B cells by specific receptors when it found, uh, uh, binds with certain antigen, uh, microbial antigen, for example, it's causing a direct activation of those B cells uh, in active form on those, uh, when it's activated, it will produce a series of certain kinds of uh, antibodies, uh, uh, for example, like immunoglobulin M. So it's a very easy and simple way of activation, just directly. The other one is called T-cell dependent activation. So it means that the uh, B-cells cannot activate it without the active role of the T-cells one. So the T, uh, the B-cells after binding with that antigen or other kind of antigen presenting cells, okay, uh, leading to the uh, expression of certain major histocompatibility complex, either one or two. So if it is, one, if it is two, it is accommodating with the certain cluster of, of, of differentiation of the helper cells. So, if, for example, the, T, uh, if the MHC2 accept, uh, activated, this will causing a, a conjugation with the uh, CD4 of the T of the T4 cells uh, leading uh, to the uh, of the T cells leading to activation of certain subsets called helper. So, the helper carrying CD4. Uh, by uh, uh, releasing certain cytokines to that B cells again, and the B cell will be activated. So this activation causing uh, mediated just by indirectly after binding to that NB gene with the and then uh, binding with the uh, certain specific uh, uh, T cells and then activation. Uh, and then the polyclonal one cause so the clonal ex ex expansion uh, taking place to the cell proliferation and causing either a plasma cells with antibody or memory B cells. The antibody function is also uh, is not uh, about the uh, antibody function is not about just directly affecting on the antigen and also just to optimize bacteria and to bind strongly uh, to the fine barrier and hereby prevent bacterial colonization. Uh, we have other process called opsonization in which the uh, by binding to the antigen this gives an activation of different effector system 
uh, uh, like for example complement all of these uh, apparatus causing mediation of PMN and macrophage migration and, and phagocytosis and leading to bacterial neutralization. So uh, the process in which the antibody mediate uh, mediate the uh, macrophages on PMN neutralization of the antigen uh, by uh, uh, by opsin uh, by uh, by phagocytosis is called opsonization. So the PMN on macrophage cannot migrate on phagocytosis these cells or these antigen bacterial antigen without the mediation of the antibody. So this, this is a process of whole mediation is called opsonization. Okay. The antibody of different subclasses uh, have different properties. And uh, it seems that uh, even the same antibodies, but cer certain subclasses of that antibody have certain uh, concentrations and availability and even functions. Uh, the, for example, immunoglobulin G2, Antibodies are, are effective against the carbohydrate antigens, uh, for example, LPS, while uh, the other subclasses are mainly directed against proteins. Immunoglobulin G1 producing plasma cells, which is the predominant one, followed by uh, immunoglobulin G2, uh, G1, sorry, 63%, and then G2, 23%, and then the three and four are the three uh, percent and 10 percent respectively. Um, if we just want to talk about the complement activation and the complement roles in the biological activities, uh, this is a very summarized diagram I just uh, want to put here uh, and just to explain that uh, for you. Uh, the complement either uh, involved in the lysine on the lysis, direct lysis of the foreign cells and bacteria by binding to certain receptors uh, found. Uh, or uh, maybe involved in the opsonization with the antibody, as we said here uh, in, the, in the previous uh, slide, uh, opsonizing bacterial vagocytosis with certain complement receptor binding here with the uh, activity of the antibody and then uh, 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 inducing the vagocytosis of those bacteria by PMN or macrophages. Uh, also, may uh, might involve in the chemotactic anaphylataxin in the vasodilation and neutrophil uh, migration and vasodilators, including C3A, 4A, and C5A. Also, might involve in the sobilization and clearance of the immuno immunological complex. So, after when there's an immune complex by antigen antibody interaction, uh, specific roles of those uh, C3A, 3B, for example. Uh, uh, C3D here, sorry, uh, has the uh, this uh, biological active role in the clearance of those immune complexes. The complement also might in involved in the enhancement of the immune responses, so either uh, causing a more activation of those B cells by the T in, uh, T dependent pathways, uh, causing the activation of those B cells by following certain interaction with the certain receptors also. So those different biological activities and complements can be found also. The other part of the immunity on the last one, I just want to talk to you today, is about cell-mediated immunity. The cell-mediated I just considered most, much more important than the uh, humoral one, because it represents, I think, the main uh, scenario, uh, the, sorry, the main maestro uh, uh, part mechanism, taking part on mechanisms Including the whole immunity, to be honest. Uh, it might involve the activation of phagocytes, phagocytes, uh, antigen specific cytotoxic T cells, um, uh, release of very cytokine responses to an antigen. This protection uh, brought by either the T cell immunity, just the T cell immunity, uh, for example, activating cytotoxic T cells by inducing apoptosis. Apoptosis, the meaning of apoptosis is uh, the program cell death. Okay, uh, of the uh, antigen presenting cells. The, the antigen presenting cells, although it just present the antigen, the bacteria to other kind of cells to give an activation, but the cytotoxic T cells causing just uh, inducing the death of those cells with, within the, that uh, hold the bacteria inside in order to give the enough protection. 
And that's why it's called cytotoxic, just because it's kind of toxic to those intracellular index cells. Uh, for example, virus infected cells, uh, cells with intracellular bacteria, as we said, cancer cells also uh, uh, display human antigens. In addition to those TLC immunity, also can activate macrophages and natural killer cells, stimulating other cells to secrete a, a variety of cytokines uh, involved in adaptive immunity responses and innate immune responses specifically uh, activation of different kinds of uh, uh, T-helper uh, subtypes. The activation or maturation of B and T-lymphocytes are regulated uh, by uh, cytokines producing macrophages and dendritic cells, the antigen-presenting cells. So uh, how can we know that the T-helpers uh, the, the T cells, uh, the helper one or cytotoxic one, can activate it. It depends on the antigen presenting cells and their con uh, correspondent uh, uh, activation and interaction with the a certain uh, T cells, as we said, the cluster of differentiation. So the infected cells the, it has an antigen fragment inside and causing uh, expression of the major histocon to multi-complex. This will accommodating with the CD8 that found on the T cells, and the T then these cells will be activated directly, uh, uh, it's causing cytotoxic one. Well, uh, but if this antigen uh, stimulating the suppression of the class two MSC, this will lead into a corresponding expression and activation, and then binding of the CD4 here, and, and then causing activation of T helper cells. Okay. Uh, the activated T helper cells, to, uh, there are too many types of sort of T helper cells depending on the circulating cytokines on each one, one of them. Uh, the T helper one cells has the ability to introduce the interferon gamma, interleukin two, uh, interleukin twelve, tumor cross factor alpha, and tumor cross factor beta. And this subtypes of helper cells has a very powerful uh, uh, pathogenic uh, effect, which causing directly neutralizing and uh, eradicating of those bacteria. Okay. Uh, the helper two, secreting interleukin four, five, uh, six, nine, uh, and 13, stimulating antibody production by B cells and contribute to the eradication also of the extracellular pathogen. The helper 17, T interleukin 4, 5, uh, 6, 9, and 13 also uh, has a pro inflammatory and pro, um, uh, pro resorptive also properties. The T reg cells, and using uh, the expression of interleukin T, which has an anti inflammatory one, and transforming growth factor beta, which are anti inflammatory cytokines also, and the T follicular helper cells, which is additional uh, uh, subsite of the helper cells inducing the expression of 10, which is anti-inflammatory, and 21 induces in the, induces the anti-inflammation, anti-inflammatory properties and inhaling properties. So uh, this is the uh, very, uh, this is a diagram uh, summarizing the uh, different kinds of the T helper cells and then corresponding uh, biological activity and function depending on the cytokine releasing or production. So on the activated T helper cells, when, uh, sorry, when the T native one uh, leading to the activated T helper cells, in the presence of certain cytokines, it will be, will be mature and develop of the certain subset. So the T helper one cannot mature and develop in the absence of those two uh, cytokines on the T helper two also. 17, the same thing, regular T on the follicular one. one any one of them will be fully developed and matured and activated. Uh, it will induce different kind of cytokine production with different uh, biological function. Uh, as we said that uh, the humoral immunity, so the immunity, inflammation won't healing, hemostasis regarding the T regular cells and suppression, and the follicular health cells including involved in the P cells maturation B cell differentiation and autoimmunity also. Uh, the alteration seems that the alteration in the T helper uh, 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 cell population subsets may lead to disease progression. 
uh, for example, the THEPO1 response has been reported to result in a stable peritonitis because as you can find here in, this, in the previous one, just the activation of cell mediated immunity, which is very good, inflammation and host defense directly eradication. Uh, in parallel, if the T helper 2, for example, imagine is going to be exaggerated and activated, this will lead to the humoral immunity and the host defense bear parasite also. And the humoral immunity means a continuous production of antibodies, okay? And the continuous uh, 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 stimulation of antibodies leading to the continuous inflammatory uh, changes within the tissues. Uh, for, so this uh, property is leading to the more and more disease progression. B cell activation, plasma cell deficiency, and antibody progression. Most prominent immune cell types within the periodontal tissue is found. Uh, there's some uh, uh, recent published papers, uh, actually, uh, they just reported that one of these mechanisms that the bacterial pathogens need to do to ensure that the periodontitis just keep on the same level and more advanced, just to uh, stimulate all the pathways related to the uh, production of the beta cells and then the plasma and antibodies rather than the T cell one try to switch the aggressiveness of those host cells by manipulating with their interaction with the membrane of the cells. Uh, so uh, it will decrease in the down-regulating of those uh, uh, T helper activation, let's say, uh, and uh, uh, leading on also in parallel causing stimulation of all the mechanisms of all the beta cells activation and plasma cells in order to uh, uh, leading to the more continuous stimulation and production of antibody production and then the prominent immune cell side with the periodontal lesions. Uh, this is the last one. Uh, and I just hope that uh, this lecture exactly will be as simple as that I want to, uh, to present to you. And I'd like to uh, thank everyone who just listened to me uh, within this my previous four lectures till now. And I hope that my lectures will be as easy as I try to summarize it and conclude it from all the uh, related uh, papers and books, textbooks, just to put that information uh, conveniently and uh, properly uh, fit it your levels and just everyone can understand what I'm saying. Uh, sorry about if the my lectures is, is, uh, is a bit maybe uh, long and boring, but uh, this is uh, this is the best thing that I can do uh, in, in terms of online uh, education system this year. Maybe if we just uh, talk face to face, maybe it's going to be easier, much easier actually. But the according to the uh, our circumstances, as you know, all of you know that uh, this uh, pathogenesis is not uh, one of the easiest uh, uh, part of our, your curriculum in the periodontics uh, periodontology. Uh, you have to just focus and uh, try to read the lectures carefully and just to try to focus of every sections from the dental clock one to the last one of this hospital interaction. And again and again, I just repeat, please, if you don't understand anything of all, all of my previous lectures, uh, you can come in person to our department and just ask me personally, and I try to clarify and explain everything in details as much as I can do that uh, in order to make it much, much easier for all of you. Thank you again, and um, I appreciate your listening and for your kind attention. And I hope and wish you all the all the luck and uh, my best wishes for all of you just to understand everything and just to succeed in the exams this year. Uh, good luck and bless and God bless you all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, my dear students. Bye bye.